Christopher for living here in beautiful San Clemente. We're so glad you're here with us this gorgeous morning. And we'd like you to join us, which means you're going to have us to stand up and sing and join our wonderful quartet of song leaders this morning on a very famous, what we call, I don't know, it's, it's our theme song for this, for this whole path. It's called I Love Myself the Way I Am. Oh, I love service. This is our time of the week that we get to join together, we get to celebrate life, we get to commune, we get to experience ah, something we don't experience the rest of the week, and that's being with each other and, and sharing and giving our gifts. And so welcome, welcome, whether you're here for the first time or the one millionth time, your presence here does make a difference, so thank you for being here. And because we are a center that honors all paths to God, we begin with the lighting of the flames of faith. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. 
We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as Reverend Judy Chapman lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Mm, and please join me in prayer in taking that, that absolute, that oneness, that love into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls. I acknowledge that one life that is present right here and right now and always where we are. I know that it is the Alpha, the Omega. It is all that exists. And therefore it is present at every point and time. And with that truth, I acknowledge that each one here is an extension of that one. We are all a part of it and a part of each other. And as we come together this morning, we celebrate that, that truth, the truth of our beings, the truth of our own divinity, the truth of the divinity of each person we see, each person we know, and those we don't know and don't see, all are one with the one, and we celebrate that. And as we listen with our ears, with our hearts, with our souls today to this message, to the music, to each other, we are uplifted. We are ah, so blessed. And I'm grateful for each gift here, each soul, each word, each smile. And so I simply let go. Ah, I let God, I know it is done. And please join me in saying. And so, so it is. is. Now I'd like to invite Joanne Leon up to the platform for our affirmation and declaration. Okay, are we ready to feel it in there? Yeah. <laughs> I believe in God, the one who created intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect created intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And now the affirmation for the day. Today, I remember that my talents are God's gifts to me. I use them consciously and with great gratitude. Creative mind continuously provides new dynamic ideas. I easily and joyously express all that is mine to do now. And so it is. Thank you so much. And please welcome the Tunicum Choir. While they are assembling, I wanted to introduce.
so we have a few solos in this first song. That first one's going to be by Wade Wooldridge. Jimmy Vann's got the next one, and then April Derive. <laughs> Just love saying him, you know that. Jamie Kalama, and then Ken Roebuck, and Harry Music. And also, please notice these little unobtrusive white microphones. We have new choir mics, I'm so excited. Yay! And thank you everyone to Josh for getting those up there with Harry's help. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to start with Shine a Little Light. Feel like clapping, dancing in the aisles? Just go for it. <laughs> of paradox, the both and promise, the message this morning is spirit and uh, creativity and self, creativity and self, and I've borrowed liberally from everywhere, but mostly Ernest Holmes, his very first book, 1918, Creative Mind, Creative Mind, which is all about how things get to be the way they are, how life gets to be the way they, it is, how our thoughts become things. And also, Matthew Fox, who was uh, released from the Catholic Church because he was way too advanced a thinker, and um, his book on creativity, it, his, his ideas are profound. And the subtitle of this book is Where the Divine and the Human Meet. 
And it certainly is that. Because as the, as the divine moves through us, through our thoughts, through our feelings, through our ideas, it takes form. And that form becomes our experiences. First our perceptions, then our experiences. So, creativity and self. That's all of us, all the time. All of us, all the time. And it is the light of the world or casting a shadow. It's up to us. It really is up to us. It's up to where our thoughts go. I was noticing, of course, I have to tell you something about my cats. It's become a <laughs> habit, um, and a good habit. So I noticed that this week that they do not like change. In fact, they are so afraid of change that when there's something different, so for, for reasons that are obvious if you look at my arms and legs, I washed all of the, all of the bedding, all of the pillows, all of the everything, and when, and when I changed that bedding, they wouldn't come into the bedroom. They would not, they would come to the entrance of the bedroom, then looked around, it's like, okay, there's something not right here. And I was thinking about that and thinking, well, we are like that. This is a good reflection, it's a good mirror for me to look at how many times do I not do something because something in me is afraid, and what I'm afraid of because it's all God you simply change. It's different. So, are you willing to embrace the differences, not just in each other, but that's a good place to start, but embrace the differences in your life. Embrace when it's different. Say, yes, this too is good, this too is God. This too is good, this too is God. I want to remind you of an old teaching story. This is way older than Science of Mind, and um, that's over 100 years old, I just said. And that is, there was a farmer in India, and he heard about diamonds and how valuable diamonds are. So he gathered up everything. He sold his whole farm. He sold all of his equipment, everything he had, and he went searching for diamonds. He went searching for diamonds, only to return finally broke, without ever having seen a diamond, without ever having purchased or being given one, having spent all of his money. And later, the person that bought that farm was looking in the stream and he noticed an odd rock. <laughs> and that rock turned out to be a very large diamond. This man had no idea what he was looking for. Sometimes that's us. Sometimes we give away, sell the pe per pearl of great price, the thing that we really, really would benefit us, we trash it. We say, this is not important, where it's the most important thing there is. So, what is that? What is that? That, of course, is our consciousness. That is what we let into our awareness mm -hmm. becomes our thoughts, becomes our feelings, becomes our perceptions, becomes our experience. That's the creative process. And how natural is a creative process to human beings? Completely natural. We've been doing it all of our lives. There were caves discovered in, in uh, West Africa that 70,000 years ago, 70,000 years ago, these uh, drawings were discovered, or the, were discovered that they had been done 70,000 years ago. They were discovered relatively recently, I think in 2000 something, 11 or something. 
But 70,000 years ago, these human beings illustrated these caves. That's what human beings do. We listen to that creative urge and we either say yes to it and something comes out, something comes about. A song comes, a book comes, a poem comes, a painting comes, a sculpture comes, or if we say no to that, what happens? That's when we have disconnected ourselves from source. When we say that there is God and something else, which there is not, there's only God as, God as, not God and, but God as. So yeah, 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 yes, I was sick last week, the week before too. Yes, I made a mistake in my thinking and I was thinking about that over this past weekend and thinking, what could have gone on in my consciousness to cause this bump in my road? And how is this related to fear and the things my cats are showing me because it's all connected. Everything in your life is pointing at the same thing. Everything is about you just like everything is about me, but it's only not, it's not only about me, it's about me as you, me as each one. And what I thought was, in our practitioner class, one of the assignments is to meditate every day on being a practitioner, and then to make notes in your journal about whatever that was for you. And I promised to do that as well. And what I realized is one of the reasons I don't deeply journal up until now is because it's when the real stuff starts to flow up. And so if you suppress that thing, it has to come out somewhere. Could come out in a cold, it come, could come out in um, you know, a person develops a cold. That's, that's the song from Guys and Dolls. Yes, 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 that is what will happen. I was uh, listening for our board meeting to uh, Michael Beck with uh, Life Visioning in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Such wisdom, such wisdom. We know all this stuff, but it's presented in a different way. And so we hear, I hear it in a different way. And one of the things that Dr. Michael said is, <clears throat> when, when something happens to you, which that, that um, used to be life. We used to think things happened to us. In fact, the whole culture thought things happened to us, you know, as human beings started exploring what life was and something would happen that they wouldn't, they didn't like, they made up something that was the spirit of the tree, that was the, it was the this or that or whatever that caused this thing. And then as we got a little more mature spiritually, we didn't believe that anymore, but we started having, telling ourselves other stories about causes that were just as much fiction as that idea of that old capricious God that's going to um, rain down hell on you for being bad. There's no such being. There's only a perfect responsiveness that's saying, yes, my beloved, yes, my beloved, yes, my beloved, to whatever nonsense or truth you plant yes. in that beautiful mind of yours. So, one of the things Dr. Michael said was, here's what happens for most of us. When something goes wrong, and our best friend comes over, the first thing we do is tell our best friend about, ain't it awful, 
this happened to me. This person said this. Can you believe what he said? And he blah, 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 blah. And that actual first time is fine. It's called venting. All of us need to vent. But then later in the afternoon, when someone else calls us, we tell the same story again. Now what we're doing is rehearsing. We're not venting any longer. We've already had a chance to vent. We're rehearsing. And then when someone calls in the night and we tell the same story again, now what we're really doing, we're planting seeds for what we will have, even though it's what we think we don't want, because we're angry about it. So here's something that you can do. I've been doing it this week. And that is to take that energy that that energy that came from resistance, so maybe it's anger or um, whatever it may be, and say your affirmation through that energy. So, you know, I was, um, I had some choice words for, for the, the things that were biting me. So here's the real affirmation. I am surrounded by harmony. Everything in my life is for me. Nothing is against me. Everything is for me, and I am for everything. Everything is harmonious in my life. Let's say that together. Everything, everything is, is harmonious, harmonious in my life. life. Now, if it isn't, say it like I said. Everything, everything is harmonious in my life. life. You see, now you're using that energy. You're getting it out. You've already vented to one person. You didn't need to vent to the next five people. <laughs> and you've changed your idea so that your circumstances can change. So that your circumstances can change. And what I realized was that's exactly the purpose of journaling about our experiences. To have an opportunity to vent to let it go, to get it out, without planting it as a seed to take root again. It's up to us. There is nothing, there is, there is no presence that's sitting somewhere and saying, I wonder, if he, I wonder what she's doing now. There's nothing like that. There's only something that knows you as intimately, and probably more intimately, than you know yourself. And saying, yay, she's planting seeds. Let's grow these seeds. Like that. Let's grow these seeds. So, everything is taking form. Everything is coming into being that you plant with passion, then with, with care, you tend for that idea, you look after it, you nurture it, and then you celebrate it when you see it in form. Then you celebrate it. Say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I knew that this was great to birth. One of the things that Matthew Fox talks about is the, even though there is a compelling urge within us to create, it is sometimes with great pain. And he tells, you know the story of Prometheus? The story of Prometheus was that his punishment for bringing fire to humankind, his punishment by the gods, was that he would have to roll the stone up the mountain every day, and then it would get to the top, it would roll back. His liver, during that rolling it up, was eaten out every single day. His liver was eaten out. Painful, painful process. But what did he do the next day? Of course, the liver regenerated. He rolled that rock back up the mountain. That was his punishment. And he did it. So, and what Matthew Fox's point was, that no matter what, no matter how painful, it must come out. It must come out so that the thing that we are creating can be given form to. So that the thing that we are creating can be given form to. Now, 
I'm looking out and seeing people who've created many things, written books, written many, many songs, written, <laughs> written wonderful creative uh, advertisements for our announcements every single, well, at least a couple of Sundays a month, looking at this creativity and wondering, is it universally so that at the beginning it's painful? Is it universally so that the beginning of the creative process is difficult? The only reason I can think of that it's difficult is that we resist it. That's the only thing I can think of. Now, if you have some other ideas, please let me know. I would gladly entertain them. But since this is normal, natural thing, that we are created in the image and likeness of the divine, and the divine simply thinks and creates. Thinks and creates. And so that is what, why we are here, to think, to create, to choose what will, what will um, satisfy us. And that's one of the things I do know is that oftentimes the, the creator, not the creator, but the creator within us judges its creation. So there's where the pain is coming. And instead of judging, what could we do? What could we do? We could be grateful. We could bring more than enough gratitude to this moment, more than we think we have. To bring so much gratitude that the, the good is inevitable. The good is inevitable. I'm open and receptive to more good than ever before. Is that true for you? Yes. Let's say it together. I'm, I'm open and receptive, receptive to more good than ever before. Ever before. So the only thing that could stop you is you. The only way, only person that can create for you is you. And you're enough. You are enough, just the way you are, and just the way you are not. Self and creativity, normal, natural, happening all the time. It's so, and it's good, and so it is. <laughs> and so it is. Now, please join me in prayer. What I know is true. I know that there is only one, one power, one presence, one light. I know that it's everywhere in its entirety. It is good and only good, and it is God revealing itself. Knowing that this one is everywhere, I know that it is right where I am. It's in me, through me, around me, and for me. And what is true for me is true for every other being. So I speak this word in the first person. And I declare an openness, a willingness, a receptivity to greater good than ever before. I get my bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. And I allow, welcome, say yes to greater good. I say yes to greater ideas. I say yes to that greater process. I say yes to letting go of any kind of fear thoughts, any kind of fear of change, thoughts of change. And instead, I say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Everything and everyone is welcome here. I say, welcome to myself, to my failures, to my successes, to my magnificence, 
and to that which I have judged as not magnificent. All of it is God. All of it is good. So what I know is that today, I am planting seeds that take deep roots and blossom and grow as prosperity, as love, as creativity, as life itself, as wholeness and health and well-being. I'm so very grateful for knowing what I know and with my heart filled with gratitude. I know that this word is a word of power, so I simply release it to the law of mind. I accept that it's complete, it is done, and please help me by saying with me, and, and so, so it is. is. And now, the Jewel Toast Choir. Again, as our choir is coming up, we are so grateful to have with us a guest tenor today. Where's Mark? Marjorie. Mark is here. Yay. Chelsea is here. Go in. Yay. And I'd like to welcome officially our two or two, three new members. We have um, Sherry over there. Raise your hand. She's joined us this year. And Robin behind her. Very grateful, yeah. Um, so this next song is a beautiful prayer called Listen With Your Heart.
time for our offertory. So if the stewards would please come forward. How we do this is uh, we read our prosperity affirmation together, which may or may not appear, but we know it. <laughs> be really good if it appeared. <clears throat> now. Now. <laughs> so we read it together and then we take a moment in gratitude. Actually, it's a couple of seconds in gratitude. A couple of seconds in gratitude. And then after that, um, we're going to sing, I am so blessed. And then the ladies oh, are going to do, it'll come back. and then it's going to come back again. <laughs> my offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
are, um, if you've been in service today, and of course that's our whole choir, or you've been in service this whole week, would you please stand so we can give you a lot of love. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you give and your talents and your time. And then if the practitioners remain standing, our practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. If you want your life transformed, make an appointment with one of these beautiful people. You'll be so happy you did. Today, the people who are in service are Aidan Greeny holding the high watch, Joanne Leone, and, and Reverend Judy Chapman. They'll be available after service. Two of them, one will be on the affirmative prayer table, or maybe both, and the other one in the tranquil living room, and the other one answering questions. So let's acknowledge our practitioners. <laughs> if you're here for the very first time, we have some information for you. And all you need to do is indicate that that's you by either standing up or raising your hand and saying, yes, I'm the one that's here for the first time. We're going to deliver something to you. So be patient. Keep your hand up. Over here. Over here in the front, two sleeves. Thank you. Does anybody? We're going to acknowledge you now. Uh, the congregation is going to... Uh, respond to something I'm going to be saying. So, welcome to our center. Welcome, welcome to, to our, our center. center. We know that you're a spiritual being. We know that you're a spiritual being. Creating a world that works for you. Creating a world that works for you. And a world that works for you works for everyone. And a world that works for you works for everyone. Welcome home. Welcome home. Let's acknowledge our center. In that little packet, there's also a welcome card. If you fill it out and take it to the bookstore, you'll receive another gift. And um, and also then you will be on our mail list. And that'll be such a good thing. Do we have announcements? Boy, do we. Okay. <laughs> Today at noon, join Conscious Connection, behold, right here in the sanctuary for a brief discussion about today's topic. And then immediately following that at 12.30, celebrate the legacy of Louise Hay with a workshop called Love Yourself, Heal Your Life, A Journey to Self-Love. It's facilitated by Rick Nichols and Dr. Patricia Crane, and they are two fabulous, beautiful people that you don't want to miss this. Um, the time together will touch your heart and deepen your awareness of how to really love yourself. And there will be a free gift for all attendees. This week at Wednesday's Wisdom, Dr. Jeannie Hounshell will present a sacred healing circle, and it starts at 7 p.m. And who loves the Wizard of Oz? Yay! So this Friday night, come and celebrate the 80th anniversary um, with songs and trivia, and it's presented by Mike Chamberlain. And there's a flyer in your program with more information. Next Sunday at 12.30, Reverend Ed Lemberger from Greater Milwaukee Center for Spiritual Living will be presenting a personal and spiritual empowerment workshop in which he intertwines his messages with his original music. Okay. More information is available on the kiosk. And classes. Classes are great. Keeps us centered and keeps us growing. And so on Sundays at 12.30, Aiden Greeny is teaching the Science of Mind 101 class on the spiritual path. And this is an eight week uh, session and is ideal for both new students and anyone who wants to review the, the basics. So if you have any questions, see Aiden after the service. On Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m., Dr. Heather is teaching the Practitioner One class. Prerequisites are required for enrollment, so please talk to Dr. Heather if you're interested or have any questions, if you want to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> And just a quick reminder that our friendship circles are still open for enrollment. There is a table back there if you want more information. Um, also flyers available. And there's a lot going on here at CSLCV, so take your inserts home with you yes. and look them over. And now, the children. <laughs> 